Welcome to Nitty Gritty. Look who's back. That would be me. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. We are now on the trek to our next hundred. Oh man, that sounds kind of overwhelming. How many episodes do we give it that we have to start making money or we quit? Next one. No, <laughs> we can give it a few more than that. Jeez. So we figured that this would be a fun time to do a little recap on the last hundred episodes because a lot has happened. A lot has changed. We haven't done a recap for a while. And honestly, we've been getting tons of questions lately about it, like favorite episodes or things that you've learned. And we've had some cool opportunities like going to the masters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on. Let's just talk about that just for a second. We have to, I said last week that we would, you know, once you got back, we would talk about it. So I am wearing my master's hat today. (laughs) But that place is, well, you know how when you build something up in your head, you set this expectation, it very rarely like meets that expectation. This is one of those times where it just meets it and it just like blew it you, right. out. You just don't even get it until you're there, especially Well, this year this is even year. more so. So we walked up to the masters, we got there. We we're like the only ones there. That's like, the thing I will never forget walking down to the end of that, you know, walkway that spits out at 16 and being the only patrons. Well, and you said it's normally like Main Street on Disneyland. It's like shoulder to shoulder people, everyone, like not in an uncomfortable way, but that's just where you go to get to the course. Right. And we have a picture and it is only us. Yep. We're the only people. Nobody else. We get on the golf course And I would have thought, oh, there's not a golf tournament being played today because there wasn't anyone there. Nobody. Like, we didn't see another patron for 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. We went to Amen Corner. Like, it was nothing. Like, the people working there were like, even during rain delays, there's more people on the golf course than there are right now. 100%. You know? Hey, who was was it that introduced us, who welcomed us into the Masters? Uh, Condi? Yeah. That was cool. (laughs) Condoleezza Rice. She was the one who I call like, her Condi. <laughs> like she was the one who welcomed us into the club shop, like into the master. See, and normally when you're walking yeah. in, you're walking in with a huge group of people. Like, but we were the only one. So it's like it was us. It's like, hey Condi. Like, I regret not having a picture with her because I have a picture with her. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got a picture with her the next day. Yeah, because like after I was like, well, we should have taken a picture. It's just us. We need to do a we we should do a post of the master stuff. Yeah on nitty gritty but she didn't take her mask down which i was a little bothered with but it was cool like i call her condi because my favorite skit remember when will ferrell used to be george w bush there was this one where he's sitting on a fence post doing like an election ad and then all of a sudden a frisbee comes and he catches it he's like not now condi (laughs) 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 but yeah man that place was cool i mean and then we had the Berkman Pass, which allowed us access to different parts of the course. And they even had like, what are they called? Like the the putting greens that mm-hmm. were just like miniature versions of the actual greens on the course that we three got to of put them are replicate. Like their their exact size. And who made the, who made the first putt? You made a pretty good putt. Yeah, I will admit. Yeah, my first one. I will admit <laughs> he made a good one. But he had a caddy helping him. It's not fair. It was like it was like a thirty foot putt, and he's like hit it one foot dead straight to the right. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, dead right, only hit it so it goes one foot. So I did it. It goes right, straight straight and then it just ran right down the hill, right to the bottom of the cup. It was pretty impressive. And then I dropped the putter, and I walked off. But I didn't have help. He had somebody say, hit it right here, even though I was sort of paying attention. (laughs) But, yeah, I didn't get nearly as close. So, yeah, that was one of those experiences where – like then after watching it, it was like, oh, I was right there. Uh, that's fun, huh? It like makes you want to go back way more now. Right. So hopefully Cam invites me back next year. <laughs> I, mean, I did I did get signed on already I for mean, next year. Just throwing it I out am there. In. Oh, I can't wait. It'll be fun next year because every well, it'll be back to normal. There'll be more people, but yeah. it also means there's more tickets. So I am I am pretty excited. The cook thing went good. It was a fun week. The yeah. next day was for some reason, the next day was like Celebrity Day. Or no, 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 no. Yeah. Thursday was. So, no, I, Tuesday was Celebrity Day. Was it? Yeah. That was the day you sat next to Dwayne Wade, wasn't it? No. No, 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 no. That was Thursday. It was the first day of the tournament. Oh, that's so right. So I wasn't supposed to go on Thursday. That's right. But 
two of the clients that this company that hires me had didn't show up for some reason. And they're like, hey, do you want to go again? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And I mean, Thursday being the first, but what was crazy is Thursday had less people than Tuesday. It was like a mix between like Monday and Tuesday. Hmm. But for some reason, it was all celebrities. Like I sat right next to Dwayne Wade for like 40 minutes. How his, amazing would it his have romper. been if you would have known he had just bought some of the jazz? That would have been such a fun conversation. He was just sitting there all spread eagle <laughs> in his Versace romper. I mean, this is a one-piece romper. I could almost see his... His balls. <laughs> and he's got a huge stogie in his mouth. Like, I'm like, that's Dwayne Wade. Like, he always just seems so nice and approachable. And he was super cool. I didn't talk to him or anything. But what's funny is my seat was in front of him. And I'm like, I'm not moving. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I sat down. Like, we, he came up. We, we kind of showed up at the same time because there were three good groups. It yeah. was like DeChambeau's group. Tony Fino, Justin Thomas, and then Spieth. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, it was crazy. But then I got a picture with Dude Perfect, which my kids freaked out about. Yeah, They were super, like, low energy. <laughs> How about the one person yeah. you missed, though? It, well, and I was going to get to that. I'm still depressed about that. So, yeah. So, are we, are we not recording this? No. No? So, you've probably never seen it on the podcast, but... My like favorite poster growing up was the life size poster of Wayne Gretzky. He's my like hero since I was seven years old. And for some reason, I did not put it together that he would be there because his son in law, Dustin Johnson, is his son in law. Yep. And we get home and everybody starts like talking about like who who they saw, like what celebrities they saw, and one of the guys was like, "Yeah, I walked next to Wayne Gretzky for like twenty minutes, and I like just." I looked at him like, what did you just say? <laughs> and I felt so stupid because for some reason on like Friday, I guess a lot of them were gone, but I really blew well, it. What's hard there is there's like no technology. I mean, it's like you are because you can't have phones. I've kind of changed my tune about that. I think it's kind of dumb. Like on the course, you have no idea where anyone is, who's there, what's going on, or who's. I mean, there's there are like man, like what what do we say, like old school scoreboards that are yeah. being run, right? There's no electronic anything, and a lot of the guys doing those things are old, and they're like thirty minutes behind. Yeah, and so we could go into Berkman's and watch the broadcasts, but it's kind of silly because. I think that there would be a way to enable, like, to allow some technology in there without ruining the experience. For sure. Like, their rules are so strict and so crazy. Did you hear about Gary Player's kid? Yeah. Holy crap. Like, he, he might be banned for life. We're I think like, he is. It, I haven't heard an official official, but, I mean, I kind of like that they do that, but I think that there's a way to meet in the middle because it does take away from the experience a little bit that you don't know what else is going on like at the masters. Yeah. Like it, he's an older guy. Like Gary player is old, right? So his son is probably our age, right? I'll bet he's even older. Than even us. older. Well, during he's friends with Lee elder. So this year for the like um, ceremonial, like tee shot to open the tournament, they invited the first black golfer to ever compete in the Masters to hit a shot. And Gary Player's kid held a sleeve of golf balls that he's like a he, part owner of. He was trying to mark it. So like as they're like talking about Lee Elder, like he just like puts his arm up and just like holds it out. Idiot. Just like perfectly like he's trying to like place his product. Like, no, we don't do that stuff here. They're crazy. Like if you were a big logo of anything, they'll tell you to take it off. But the fact that he did that during like this was a pretty big deal. It's always been Gary Player and Jack Nicholas that take the tee shot, but them inviting Lee Elder, like, yeah, it's like a feel good moment. It's a big deal, and I mean, well, stupid move. Even Gary Player is like, if you have to ban him for life, I get it. Like, he's like not trying yeah. to defend him. He's just like, if you need to kick him out, kick him out. <laughs> That's right. I mean, what do you do? So I kind of like that side, but you know, there's got to be a way for cell phones to not work for anything else other than. The app, like a master's app. Well, so even, you have a map. Well, even you have if you a turned scoreboard. in your phone and they gave you some sort of device, like we talked about, uh, right? Right. We talked about like being able to rent like a tablet, yeah. thing. 
just so you could you'd have walking GPS. Mm-hmm. You could even do like you could even do your shopping on the phone. Yeah, and then just do just like pick window up. pickup. Yeah, right. Just to get so I don't know. I think it would open up. They're literally the only course that doesn't allow cell phones on the tour anymore, which to me until last year was kind of romantic, but now I think it's dumb. <laughs> like I think there's a way. Like people are so worried about their manners and not running. Like they would treat their cell phones the same way. Like I think people would be super respectful. The ringers would be off because if you treat it the same as everything else, like you're out. Yeah. Like, if your phone rings, see ya. You're out, and you're out forever. Yeah. And so anyway, I just think that it would add to the experience a little bit more than like adding like big jumbotrons and mm-hmm. electronic scoreboards. Like I would much rather people just be able to kind of like look at their phone to do that stuff. But anyway. All you women out there, I'm sure you're bored now, so we're going to stop talking about the Masters. We're sorry, but it was really fun to see Andrew because Andrew's it done so some cool fun. things in his life, but I'm it like was a like a kid. kid in the candy <laughs> shop, and we both spent a lot of money in the pro shop. I wish it was like candy. <laughs> it wouldn't have hurt so much. So, it, oh, if you want to buy anything from the Masters, I between Cam and I, I think we have we, every we, piece of Masters have paraphernalia, <laughs> and it's just sitting on my in my bedroom so anything yep. you want we're gonna turn in i've got some stuff on ebay we're right gonna now. create our own little pro shop that's right it's so hard not to buy that stuff but anyway so yeah recap what are we talking about well it was kind of fun so we just got back uvu it's a local university in utah asked us to come and kind of teach or not teach talk to their entrepreneur class and it was so fun it would have been way more fun if it wouldn't have been like a virtual and in-person class because i mean as a college student if you get an option you're not to watch a class online or show up to school, you're not going to show up. For sure. And so we didn't have that many students there, but the ones that were there were, you know, it was tons of fun. But they asked a bunch of questions that have been happening a lot lately. So I want to, we talked about it a little bit at UVU. What would you say over the last 100 episodes? Well, first of all, did you really honestly believe we'd get to 100 when we started? No, I mean, I didn't even think about it. I don't think I even thought about like how long we're going to do. We just went. So, but if you would ask me after 20, if we'll get to a hundred, maybe if you asked me after 10, if we'd get to a hundred, I'd say probably, uh, I don't know, 50, 50, but after 20, I probably would have said yes. Yeah. Just because you're on top of it. And so, well, it's crazy. I mean, to think you've done something every week for a hundred weeks, like, I don't know that I've done anything besides stay married for a hundred weeks in a row. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I can't think of any, like maybe go to school for a hundred weeks of the weeks that you're supposed to go to school. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's crazy. It's all, I mean, that's almost two years. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like I had, if you had asked me if we would have done it, I probably would have said yes out of ignorance just because of like, well, I don't know why we would stop. But now if you ask me if we're going to get to 200, it's like, right. Oh, that feels like really heavy. It does. Like that feels way harder than a hundred, which like, is kind of funny. Ooh, sorry. Like getting the guests and doing all that and like keeping it fresh. Like, but then again, it doesn't like, it does seem hard, but it wasn't that hard. Well, and so I went to the Johnson file show last night. Two nights ago? <sighs> Two nights yeah, ago. We didn't go. Gosh, but dang. it was so fun because like we ran into Betsy and Gentry. Really? And then Megan, Sweet Tooth Fairy, and then Jess for mixers. And it's just like Reunion. Yeah, it's just so fun to like see guests that are now friends. Right. And it's funny because they're all women. I'm like, hey guys. And I'm like, <laughs> Hey oh, girls. Here's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's fine. I got a text from Nicole. I was too scared to respond, but she's like, as soon as the show's over, come through the door over here on the left and come say hi afterwards. And I looked at it I'm like, oh my gosh, that was tonight. <laughs> anyway, I'm so sorry. I'm so sad that I missed it. But So my question to you is, what what's most surprised you from the, from the podcast so far, like over the last hundred episodes? Hmm. Probably the women thing. Yeah. Like I would have never thought, cause you know, when we first started, like we had talked about some of the people I knew, you know, just through the restaurant and stuff and a lot of athletes, a lot of, anyway, like to look at 
our listenership and followers. Like we are a chick podcast <laughs> straight up <Yeah. laughs> and I love it. It's great, but cause it is so different and I have learned. It's not like my opinions have changed, but I guess I have a whole new level of respect that maybe I didn't have for women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Not because I didn't think they could do it or anything like that. Just until you actually hear all their stories, like they do have to deal with more to be in those positions as yeah. women, especially if they're moms, yep. which most of them are. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it's been really, really cool. Cause I do, I have such a respect. The one thing I don't like is how all women entrepreneurs just do stuff for other women. Like I want to go to their classes now because <laughs> they're awesome, <laughs> but they just think that women are the only ones that are allowed to listen to them. So one of these days, like Susan, she needs to do like, a man day <laughs> like hey man i can teach you some things and she can oh for you know sure. what i mean so sure. and i get it i i 100 get it like it, it's i think it is so cool what they do but i think it i think it would be pretty awesome to have a couple of days or weekends or whatever set aside for men because it's just a totally different outlook you know yeah like it's a different way of thinking about business like they have a different perspective than we do and, you know, I think they can multitask a hell of a lot better than we can, but we can learn from that. So I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool to get a few of the like godfather type entrepreneurs around here, women entrepreneurs and do like a man day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or just, yeah. Like hot dogs and burgers for lunch. Hot dogs and burgers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Jason and Bam Bams. We'll get J-Dogs and <laughs> yeah, Bam Bams. We'll yeah. cater it. Perfect. And Perfect. let's go. So yeah, anyway. That's definitely one of the things that I'm most surprised about and that I've, I would say I've learned that yeah. I didn't really know before. So I think for me, the biggest surprise has been like the business of social media yeah. because I've talked about it before. Like I was super anti-social media, like had all the apps deleted. I don't, I still don't love it. It still doesn't like feel like something that I, I enjoy. It. But like my respect for the business that it is social media, like it's crazy. Like it's really sophisticated, tons of work, but also like the businesses that have been created, the brands that have been created, like even just look at Instagram, just that one app has created unbelievable businesses, Right. you know? And what's cool is it takes absolutely nothing to get started. No money, no training, it's true. You know, like, I mean, just look at some of our guests. We'll just use Abby, for example. I mean, a bad haircut on Instagram. Changed your life. Her husband just quit his job. Yep. Like. I know I text her for her 2.0 episode. Yeah. And like last week she goes, yeah, if there's a day this week you want me to come in, let me know. Yeah. This week, uh, let's try again in June. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll be traveling. I'm like, okay. All right, girl. Go have fun. But like, that's so cool. And I would have never believed that before the podcast that that was real. I just wouldn't have. It, yeah. Until you see it. I mean, it totally makes sense. But do you think that that is, do you think that there is a different, because I have kind of an interesting theory about this. Can that happen for a, a man? For sure. You think so? Look at Corey with Taft. But did Instagram completely like create him? Uh-huh. Like accidental told, post? Not accidental post, but it was all intentional. He was just posting. His business right. started by posting on Instagram. I just, I'm just saying like, I think that women share more than men on, on social. Okay. Like if you can get women to like what you're doing, you're going to grow faster than sure. I think you would with men. Like that, that's kind of my theory. Cause like Carol for president, right? Like that, <laughs> yeah. that whole thing was just Abby being Abby. Yeah. Like she, she had been doing social for a while and was just kind of slow build, you know, yeah. long grind. <laughs> and so, <laughs> sorry, that's an inside joke. <laughs> Can I just say what you said? No. So, come on. I won't say what I said after. I'll just say <laughs> that Andrew was talking about a Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. You can edit it if you want. Andrew can make the final decision. But he goes, yeah, like I like circuit training. Like I like to, just, when I'm on the Peloton, like short, powerful, like get on there, get done. Like 
Jenna, she wants to get on there and just have like a really like long grind, like power it out. <laughs> anyway, you can <laughs> you can fill in the rest, but <laughs> Brent just made a note. That's out. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take it out. That was so funny. Anyway, so that's why I said a long grind. Okay. Um, I do think, I do think a man could, and there are a lot of examples of it. I think we've been exposed to more women, but I do think you're right that it's more natural that's too. You're I think right. it's more natural for women to get on and share more often. Right. And connect emotionally where I don't think men connect as easily emotionally. I mean, modern dad, look at Jason. I love him. Oh, right? that post we did the other day with his cosmic sands. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. That was that might be the single funniest moment for me <laughs> in the first episode, like hundred episodes, was when he was like, I'm a little gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Like West Valley's old English, I'm Cosmic Sands <laughs> yeah. or whatever. I mean, that was the funny, like that sounded like a prepared bit. And I mean, I'm sure he's used that before a hundred times, but oh my gosh, that I mean, was good. Seth, late notes. Yeah, we like don't talk cartoon. enough about Seth, actually. I was thinking about him the other day. Like his social media is the best. I feel so bad because when people talk about guests, we always bring up the same people. Well, we've had a hundred episodes. That's right. a lot of people. We need to get like you know how like on your mission, your like mission a Hall president of Fame wall has. Uh, that's the thing. Like uh, we need well with everyone's picture. Like so we can just look at the board and quickly see like <laughs> yeah. yeah you know how your mission president just says like I remember when he's like I want you to look up at that board and tell me everything you know. And we went off to tell that story one day. It was like a Mexican standoff, Chilean standoff. Oh, we did, we did it every changes. It was that, that was the most fun. Oh, I learned so much in that. Like we, when we do like, transfer. well, no, this wasn't me being in the office. This was me knowing some shiz. Oh, yeah. like I was in the cool kid club. Like my first six months, remember I always joke about how I screwed off the first six months. Yeah. I knew the guys buying drugs and sleeping with chicks and going skiing every day. Like, Mission. oh yeah, dude, I have a story. I'll tell it one day on here. It's, it's a crazy story, but. Yeah, so in my mission, there was a group that called themselves the Pimps. <laughs> <laughs> and what the hell? Yeah, when Are I you? when I showed up, there was there was the lone surviving member of the Pimps oh, that was left. <laughs> he, the, did he have a grill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is that, it just memorized my discussions. That was that we, was the month twenty. Welcome to El Salvador moment. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Like we, it, I showed up to a mission. Like the zone leader had like a Colo Colo soccer beanie and a chain, <laughs> like to his wallet. I was like, "That's a missionary." Like our that mission was so messed up. Anyway, so yeah, oh, yeah. So Seth, late notes. Like I do. Like he's built what he's built. You're on totally. Instagram, you're totally right. right. I think it's just the fact that we've been around more women. But, yeah. But you're right. Like I, I will say. Like I noticed with Ashley. Every time that something is funny, like there's a group text going on. Oh, for sure. Like they immediately get on and the whole little crew is just chatting about it. So when they share everything, they share everything. And so that's why I think like, if you can get a loyal following, like from women, it, it can't like, but, oh my gosh. So the other day, Betsy did a post um, of her eating here. Yeah. I had 130 new followers <laughs> in literally an hour and they were all women. Oh yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to send her something. That was, because I, I, it was during the Masters. Yeah. I hadn't really looked at my phone. I looked at my phone. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. And I just keep going, keep going, keep like, you know, new follow, new follow, new follow. And it had been like 48 hours since her post. So I finally was able to find it. But I'm like, oh, yep, it was Betsy. Yeah. I text her right there. And it's like, hey, I owe you one. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's crazy. And like, I'll have a dude, I will say like in the barbecue space, you see that there's some guys that have built some pretty big followings, just kind of doing what like Susie does, like, sure. Hey girl. Hey, sure. But so maybe if you do something in the man, you know, man verse like barbecue, it maybe, maybe it is the same. I don't know. But. Yeah. So most common question, do you have a favorite episode. We've talked about this before and it's so hard because every week it changes. Yeah. I think we would have to like break it down into. So yeah. So maybe let, let me ask you what type of episode do you enjoy the most? Do you enjoy like mm. whether it's like 
more like a deep conversation, like a sensitive subject, just having fun? I don't know. I think I really do like the having fun ones and I love being surprised. Yeah. Like even last week when you were gone, like I was surprised by that one. Yeah. That was kind of last minute. Like it is definitely a guest we would have gone after. For Lacey, sure. With like lace tear extensions. Like I, I was not like Brent and Andrew had been hounding me for like a week. Like, Hey dude, you've got to, you've got to cover this one. Andrew's out of town. And of course, like Wednesday before the last day that we could record with Brent, I'm like, okay, I'll find someone. <laughs> and of course I just tech, like I sent out like five feelers. Um, and you know, I had a couple people come back to me, but then I just text Susan. I was like, Susan, I need your help. <laughs> and of course, 20 minutes later we have Lacey signed up, but, um, that one just surprised me because, you know, you see this, she's this cute girl, like very, very like strong personality. Just you look at her and you're like, of course she's going to be successful. But then you hear like the obstacles, the divorce, right? Single mom while starting the company. And then Susan's like, well, and then there's the MS. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And every time that happens, I just go, men suck. Like <laughs> women just have a tolerance and, you know, maybe I, I shouldn't say men suck because I think if we were in the same position that women are coming from, you know what I mean? Like women have it harder in the business world. Like to start a company has got to be harder for them. They don't have the network that we do. You know, they they haven't necessarily, a lot of these women have been moms for a long time. Well, if you look at the amount of funding that goes to like a woman well, run oh, business is way lower. It's it has so to be. sad. Because they sad. just, and I mean, they just don't have that network but I think that that's changing pretty quickly, but at least here. Yeah. Um, so would, if we were in the same position, could we do the same? Like, yes, I think we could like human beings. Doesn't matter what gender we are. We can handle a lot of hard things, but in our current state of affairs, like no way, like, we go to work every day and we try our best, you know, for the, that's been kind of the stereotypical, you know, last 50 years or whatever. Yeah. Right. But I think the the hurdles that they have are way higher than the hurdles that we have for sure. And they're jumping into it. Like you think of Betsy and, uh, Angie, Ange I was going to say Angela. I'm sure that is, <laughs> but like Betsy and Angie were just like, weren't they just walking around the block together? Yeah. You know, shine cosmetics. Like there's so many of them, Susan. I mean, they're, they're all of them. Yeah. It's like, they were just moms and they just said, let's start this thing. And now they're, bosses yeah. i mean they are like oh they're the big well they all say oh, i can't say it i'll get in trouble but they love to call themselves like bad biz niches <laughs> you know what i mean oh there was a there's a podcast that we need to invite her on but it's called the like is it the bad broad or something like that oh the one that susan's always talking she was uh -huh. just on it right i think so yeah and i'm just like they love calling themselves like bad broads and you're, I don't want to say it. I'll get in trouble. I'm not allowed to say it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, well, geez, we got to start calling ourselves something like that. <laughs> you can think of anything, Andrew? No. <laughs> but it's, I love that. And, and you know what? I just kind of answered my own, my little observation about, well, like men want to learn from you too. It's like, you know what? More power to them. Yeah. Because they, they've all had to deal with so much more to fire their stuff up. And how cool is it that they can make it a little easier for the, the next yeah. you know, group of women that want to do the same? Yeah. And so I'll shut up. Like you can invite us a little later when things, <laughs> when things even out a little bit more in the business world. But it, it, it is. It's such a cool thing to see. Yeah. And I don't think I ever thought about that before the podcast. Yeah. Like, of course, I thought I've never been not supportive of women starting businesses and, and working the way that they do, but I don't think I ever respected it or appreciated what yeah. they have. Yeah, you hear to, all the stories right. behind it, for sure it helps. For sure. So that's probably the number one thing. I mean, I know the question was what my favorite episode was, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to go to the heartfelt ones. Okay. Like, uh, Kim, Betsy, Danny, Robin. Yeah. Um, who am I met? Tandy. Tandy. Yeah. Um, so many th of them. Those, those ones, I actually wrote that on the, on the page and we kind of talked about this at UVU. The ones that show, 
show you that human beings, there's nothing that a human being can't come back from. Yeah. It's so hard to think like getting crunched in a dumpster. Yeah. High on drugs or dying in a basement and having your dad carry you out because you're only 95 pounds or, you know, Kim, what she went through. I'm going to start crying if I keep talking, but um, it's, those are lessons that just make everything seem, um, we take life way too seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we don't, we don't enjoy we make enough. things way too hard on ourselves and when you hear a story like that you realize what we are capable of and the things that we are whining about every day are just there's a word welcome to adhd perspective is a good word like that fits but it does it changes your perspective on what you think is hard and of course things are hard like marriages are hard right work is hard Raising kids is hard, um, but dying or being sexually assaulted and having zero power over that situation and coming back and starting successful businesses well, and not being a victim, right? And not, yeah. And not being a victim is great. Not only not being a victim, but not being a victim and saying, this isn't going to slow me down. Like yeah. it might've just sped me up for like, sure. I, I, I'm probably going to do something now that I could not have done without knowing the strength that I have. Yeah. It, it just seems like no matter how dark something is or how horrible something is that can happen to you with the right support and work, you can turn it around and not only be ex incredibly successful, but you can help everybody else. Like hearing Danny's story about like that street in Alpine. Yeah. Just like I went to one house to help a guy out and I think I just left my like 15th house. Yeah. And now you have this neighborhood that is like bound together. And if he didn't die in a basement. Yeah. Like those people would not be saved. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I would probably say those are the hardest episodes to record for us. Like they're tear jerkers. You feel like an idiot because you bitch and complain about things that yeah. are very, very, I'm still looking for that word. Surface level? No, they're just stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're stupid things to whine about compared to what these people have gone Insignificant. through. Insignificant. Yeah, still not the word, word I'm looking for. I don't know why the word minutia keeps popping in my head, but that's Conundrum. not the word either. <laughs> Horse. <laughs> no. Monday, no, that's more of a task, but the, it's along that line, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> but, but yeah, like it, it makes you appreciate what you have yeah. and the things that you maybe don't have, you'll stop whining about that because there are people that have been through much harder things and they've had to come back from things that, you know, there's somebody I've wanted to get on the show for a long time that I keep forgetting to call it's Court McGee. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. UFC fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he just challenge that YouTuber? Oh, please let that happen. Jake Paul's the biggest douchebag on earth. I feel like he just challenged like, dude, I'll knock him out. He Court will kill him. Like he fought Ben Askren, who was a very good UFC fighter, but he showed up looking like a dad. <laughs> dude, fat rolls and <laughs> it was so weird. Anyway, oh, that would be amazing. I got a text. Maybe him today. it wasn't him, but I I can't was, I could see Court doing that because Court's like at the backside of his career. Yeah. Like He's getting older. He it, it was, a, it was a guy like that who Dude. came out and said something. There's been a couple of hockey guys that have said the same thing. Yeah. You know, because they fight for a living, for right? For sure. But, but no, Court, and I'll kind of kill the story, but, you know, he his drug story is crazy, but there was one where he was sleeping in a U-Haul, like pretty much OD'd. When he came back to, he was in Iowa. Oh, wow. Like started in Utah. I got out of the truck. It was freezing cold, and it was, I, I want to say it was in Iowa. Huh. Like, and here he is, like, he's been in the UFC for 12 plus years, super successful. All he does when he's not training is, like, speak at middle schools and high schools That's and cool. help people, you know, get over their drug addictions and their addictions. And so, you know, you hear that stuff, and it's like, man, look what he, he, he didn't just go from, like, 
rock bottom to like having a good life. He went from like rock bottom to basically the NFL of his sport. Yeah. Like he won the ultimate fighter, which was so cool. And he won it just being tough. Yeah. Like he was not the best fighter, but that guy has been through some crap. So getting punched in the face was probably nothing to him. Yeah. And so just, so yeah, long, super long winded answer. Sorry, but oh. those are my favorite. I, I'm going to pack those Kim, Robin, Tandy, Danny, okay. th- those like coming back from the bottom, the bottom, bottom episodes is my favorite. Okay. How about yours? Um, favorite episodes are, how do I say it? The episodes that make me change or challenge me. Hmm. Like That's a better answer than mine. <laughs> That's a great point. Can we start over? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because we've had some people that have come on that. G- example. Yeah. I want to hear some examples. I mean, challenge me. Charlie Bird. Oh, okay. Challenge how I feel. Gosh, I love that man. You know? And, I just, I love him. And look at how you can be a gay member in our church, right? Like completely changed who I am and my perspective on it. Right. I mean, there's the easy ones, you know, with Yehosh and Tim and going through the racism, like with Michael, like all this stuff that happened with George Floyd and all that kind of It'd stuff. It'd be fun to talk to them again. Just, I think we all have new perspectives and opinions. I mean, and, even with Lena, right? To hear some of the crap that our niece had gone yeah. through. Um, but there's so many. I mean, there's the really deep ones like that. But then there's even ones that like with an Anna who challenges me on what social media can do and can be. Right. And so more than anything for me, like I like feeling that I am growing. And so like when I can be proven wrong, I actually really enjoy it because it's like, well, that says a lot about you, I think, you know, and even Sadie coming in and talking about crystals and chakra and energy and you know what I mean? But it's like, I would have never, it's true. Sadie, I, I would have never been open to listening to that had I not met her. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it, but. Like, so something Tim said has always stuck with me since that episode is when someone thinks differently than I do, I ask them why, like, as opposed to being like, oh, you're an idiot. Right. You know, cause I think that's what we naturally do. Like if someone disagrees with us, it's like, oh, you're uneducated, you're stupid, you're this, you're that, as opposed to being like, well, we'll see a lot of that now, right? It's like, Talk to me about why you feel that way, because you've obviously put thought into it. So help me understand your side. Now that doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to agree with everything you say, but I can appreciate it. How much better would our country be if everybody just did exactly what you just said? It would solve. It would solve almost everything. It would. And you know what I mean? I can't, like I was talking to my dad yesterday and I won't, I won't talk about who he mentioned, but somebody very close in my family, like he, he is 100% convinced that if you're LDS, you can't be a Democrat. Yeah. Like it, it, it is like a sin to him. Yeah. And I just laughed. I was like, what an idiot. Like that is so What's funny. crazy. Someone said that at conference. Well, conference, it was all about it. He said it, it word for word. Wasn't actually, it? you can be a member of any it was political a, party. Was it Oaks? I think it was Oaks actually. The, and yeah, he did say, it's like, look, you like, can be, yeah. give me a break. And what's so funny is Republicans were Democrats 50, 60 years ago. Like it, it swapped. Yeah. Like it, it's so funny. The labels like, would I say that the Republican side of things maybe fit a little bit more often on like the Christian right, whatever? Okay, maybe. But my gosh, to say that every Christian's a cookie cutter version of each other is so stupid. Yeah. Like it, but yeah, like the fact that this person would not even listen to somebody else, yeah. they wouldn't ever ask that question. Like if somebody in his own family, even probably, yeah. you know, it, it's crazy. And so for me, that's because like I'm a genuinely curious person. That's why the podcast has been so fun is because I really enjoy people right. and learning about them. But yeah, that's been probably, that's what I enjoy the most is like, oh, wow, I didn't think like that or I wouldn't have thought Having about that. a whole that. new set of beliefs yeah. and opinions. It's awesome. Like I feel like I, am a, I feel like I am a much better person today than I was when I started the show. And I feel like I was a pretty good dude. You were a pretty good guy when we started. You were, but I, I like to. I do feel like I'm a. Pr- I feel like I'm a better version of myself now, which makes me feel better because 
hopefully I'm a better version tomorrow than I am today, right? Right. Um, but along those lines, what has changed about you personally because of the podcast? Ooh. Actually, I have an answer. Okay. I don't judge as quickly anymore. Because how many times, like, <laughs> I'm pretty open about that. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, why is she escaping my mind right now? Crystals, Sadie, <laughs> like Sadie was one. Like I, like I looked at Sadie's social media before she came in. I'm like, this chick's gonna drive me insane. Or even like Vess, right from Aptiv. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, it wasn't the social media side, but oh yeah, he's summer sales. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd still say that it was worse. Like there are definitely some people that have been on here that if you look at their social media, you're like douche. <laughs> <laughs> right and i hope that that's okay like i'm being honest it like it it sucks to hear that but i think we are all guilty of that right but then you meet the person <laughs> and <laughs> sorry but then you meet the person and it makes sense why they have so many followers and why they have such a like i think women are better i think women can be meaner with each other yes right but i also think that they're better at seeing through some of the stuff that we look at as like narcissistic bs yes and you know every time we have somebody like that on the show i'm like well no wonder they have a big following these are excellent people yep and i always like there's really there's never been a guest except one (laughs) (laughs) what i wonder at what point we're ever gonna admit what one we're talking about but never never, (laughs) um there (laughs) was Yeah, we should be recording this one. There's been some good faces, but it, it's been really helpful for me to be able to look at something and not judge a book by its cover. Yeah. So I've, I would say that I've learned a, lo- a whole lot of things. Um, it's been really good for my ADHD to talk about it, and and I feel like running the podcast or like being host is kind of a mirror to ourselves in a sense. Like we are talking okay. to people that challenge, like you said, challenge us, make us think differently. Like for us, it's like therapy almost. Sure. And it's, it's, it's really cool. Like Kristen, you know what I mean? Like how, oh, how yeah. crazy was that episode? Kristen Hodson of it, just how much it made you think. And you know, it made you feel a little awkward a couple of times. That but might be that podcast that I re- that I recommend the most the most yeah i agree it's hard to listen to for some people i've heard that but it's so important yeah for them to listen to it because you know the other thing about Kristen is it's not just the information it's just the, the heart, way the heart yeah like she has such a way about herself that we can all learn so much from about just like there's nothing wrong with you well like, the way that she communicates it is really really good. she's just so sweet yeah. and I just love her. And I think that that that's the type of stuff where I think we're really lucky. Yeah. Because we get this front row seat with these amazing people, get a window into their lives, get to learn some things, like you said, be challenged. But I think for me, the one thing that I really needed to fix was judging books by their Instagram accounts. <laughs> <laughs> no, their Instagram accounts. <laughs> that's their cover. And so it's, you know... It, I, that would have to be it. And I've, I've learned, it's funny. I pulled this article up because again, I talk about, I, you know, I talked a lot about ADHD and our UVU thing. Yeah. And it was cool. It was cool to look up and see a few people like nod, like, oh my gosh, that's me. Yeah. And well, even the Dean's wife, right? Yeah. The Dean's wife came up and Dolly, we had a pretty cool little talk yeah. afterwards and you know, it was cool to be thanked for being so open. And you know, that one guy was just like, I don't think we've ever had guests that were more open book and just, we're like, welcome to the nitty gritty. <laughs> right, right. Like it's, it, it could be bad, but it's funny because I've been looking at, I've been doing a lot of research the last week or so. You know, it just kind of goes in waves for me, like when I want to learn new things. But there's, it's such an interesting time to have ADHD because there are so many people that know that it's real now. So there's really interesting studies. Well, there's money getting behind it, right? Uh, right. And so it, I've been thinking a lot about social media and why I hate doing it. And there's been some really interesting studies come out. I had to pull it up because I can never remember the name, but it's called rejection sensitive dysphoria. 80% of people with ADHD struggle. Like very, very hard. Like rejection is very hard. 
like super sensitive. And I can't even read Yelp. I can't read Which Yelp Which is so or funny Google. because you did door-to-door sales for nine years. Right. That's well, all it is. But I don't think, it's not necessarily the rejection that you're thinking of. It's like. It's personal, right? Because I guess. Yes. On the like doors, if somebody on gives the me doors, a two-star review, that's like. That is like a slight to my life's work. Yeah, because yeah, because if you're selling alarm, they say no. You're like, I don't care either. I wouldn't buy it if I were you either. <laughs> <laughs> well, like even like spouses. Like, there's a lot of times where I'm sure I've been way oversensitive about something that Ashley has For said sure. or not said. For sure. And that's not fair to her. So it's so cool to kind of know. Okay. It's yeah. so cool to kind of know that if I know about it, I can work on it. Sure. Right. And I think that I finally figured out why I don't post on social media. You're worried about what people are going to say? Not necessarily what they're going to say, but like if people don't like what I post or yeah. it, I don't even think there's a real reason for it. Like people have always been super kind and I hear all the time, like you have such a fun personality. I love it when you do Insta stories and, but none of that matters until I can kind of get over that hurdle in my yeah. own head and. That's the type of stuff that I feel like I look for and think about because of the podcast. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Interesting. What, what, what keeps you wanting to do it? Fear of you getting mad at me for not (laughs) doing it. (laughs) Like your, your, his text last night, like something structured, you know, let's, let's do something structured. It was a little like, you need to, you need to prepare for this. (laughs) Like we're going to pick three, like our three favorite or th- three things we've learned. Yeah. But no, we make a good, we make a good, con- I think we make a very good pair. And so, um, so yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> oh yeah. What makes you want to keep doing it? No, honestly, for me, it's, I've had some pretty bad days. Like, when I showed up for the podcast, like yeah. this is the last thing I want to do today. And it always without fail cheers me up. Yeah. And it just makes me love people like it. You know, the restaurant's gotten to the point, like as of a couple of years ago where I don't go out front very often anymore because I, it'll just turn into a gab fest. Like, and it's my fault. Like yeah. people want to talk to me and which is amazing. But I've also realized that, I've kind of shut myself in too much. And so the podcast has been good because it's like, I love people. I get energy from people. And I would say over the last few months, especially like I've really started, like I will just go up to random people now. Like I, and that's how I used to be. Like I made a whole family of friends at the bowling alley the other day. Like (laughs) they just looked fun. Now we all follow each other on Instagram. We might even join a bowling league together. Like that's our new family activity. And I'm like, (laughs) That was me. Like, that's how I've always been. I will go up to anyone, anywhere, anytime, and just make friends. Yeah. And the podcast has kind of helped, you know, wake in that Like, bring back. that back? It bring that back. Cool. Yeah. You? So, so you're, you always have the good questions. I love it, because <laughs> I can answer it, and then go, what about you? <laughs> um, what makes me want to keep doing it is, like, meeting the guests. Right. Because I do think something unique about nitty gritty is we have some really cool people come on right and i'm sure they'd say this to all people but i'm going to believe that they don't i don't believe they do i know exactly where you're going with it. that our podcast is different like susan says it to me all the time like we like we legitimately leave the podcast as really good friends with our guests nine times out of ten yeah like really good friends like to the point where i almost feel bad that we don't get to hang out with all of them more right because i would love to i genuinely would really enjoy hanging out with like all of our guests right and so for me it's because i would have never have met nine out of ten of these people for sure you know like i just wouldn't have there wouldn't have been a reason to and it's fun to continue to meet people and like establish genuine relationships with them. Right. And so for me, that's selfishly why I keep doing it. I I don't think that's a selfish thing, you know, to meet people and well, podcast is kind of cool because you have set apart time to talk to each other. Yeah. Like I could meet these people on the street and say like, I know this person, you know, this person. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah. But then that's it. But here it's like, and that's, what's cool about our structure. Like we don't really have any structure. We just kind of go. And so, you're right. By the by, the end of it, everybody feels pretty connected, yeah. which is pretty cool. And so, 
Um, do you have like a, uh, who would you say is the one that you probably, is there a guest that you spend the most time communicating with over other, I mean, I'm not going to say a favorite. Oh, interesting. But is there one that you, I mean, whether you've gone into business with them or <laughs> have you, cause Andrew does start like 2.5 businesses a week. <laughs> and so I don't know. Is there one that you are more connected to than others that ha they have become like genuine friends i mean like we've gone on double dates with danny and Ege, right you know and like that's danny and unicorn you mean <laughs> yeah she really took that nickname to heart um i talked to anna a lot Anna's awesome i talked to susan a lot which is funny because i used to only talk to susan when i was with you right but now like her and i've gone to lunch that, isn't that us. fun you know what i mean she calls me all the time and i just feel so cool whenever she does <laughs> um but like just yesterday, um, Dan Davis. Oh yeah, he just shot me a text like, "Dude, just thinking about you. How are you?" Like that's pretty. Like that's pretty cool, right? You know what it's I mean? Very cool. And so, I don't know. Yeah, it's fun to see him around town because that is the fun thing about most people being local is you do start running into them more. Right. I mean, but well, and we and we all end up at similar places because. We're not very removed from a lot of our guests. Like, no, they're all friends. Well, like of the, friends, like the or, example is like the Johnson Philo show, right? Like, I'll bet between their two shows, will you quit bringing that up, please. No, because you didn't get to experience. Oh, and by the <sighs> way, it was probably the funniest one when I saw the picture of the cast. Yes, I really regretted not going. So here's how you know, like, like Sean would talk about when he makes Nicole laugh, he's done a good job. Right, right. Like when comedians make the other comedians laugh, you know they're doing good. For sure. Oh, it's like the SNL breaks. Like whenever you see, like they try so hard not to laugh at each other, but when you can make another comedian laugh uncontrollably in a skit, I laugh so hard so when that happens. I can't count the number of times where someone on the side because they're all mic'd up, right. laughed so hard. They had to like walk away <laughs> because they were laughing so hard at something that was going on. on I the stage. really blew it. And Gosh, so dang it. Like that was so, Oh, it was so funny. That, that was such an all-star. Mm -hmm. It was a good one. It's like all my favorite people that they do that with were there. And I just feel so, cause of course you text me. Oh, I felt so bad. Like come and see us after the show. You know, here they're like, Hey, come backstage. Like, that's a really cool thing to be able to do. Yeah. Nope. I was on my recliner <laughs> doing jack crap. Man, no. I love it. Brent, what do you have any questions for? Like anything running through your mind? Brent. So you finally had a chance. You had your chance. So what's something you want to change about the show? Making money. So let's talk about that. Okay. No, I mean, really, instead I, of, instead of joking about it, let's legit talk about it. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> it means not working for free. No, it's, I'm working on a lot uh, right now with myself. Yeah. Right. Like I, I've had some epiphanies recently, like I'm getting older and there are just some things that I'm not doing that I need to be doing. Okay. Like mostly like self-awareness stuff, you know, ADHD, I bring up all the time, of course, but I'm not managing it the way that I should. I take my medicine, right? But the most like common things that are helpful, like sleep and exercise, like I'm not doing any of that stuff. So what I have not been good at for a long, long time, unless it is my like ADHD hyper focus wormhole thing, like I love it, like barbecue, yeah. right? Is like set a goal and actually go after it. Yeah. Like I was, I sat down last night and actually thought of, goals like okay three i can't do big ones like big goals just don't seem real to me sure but i was just thinking of like three things i could do that would take maybe a month but i don't remember the last time i set a goal and then attained it or huh. went after it and so i think that so what were these goals you set <sighs> do i really want to talk about these <laughs> um so 12,000 steps a day. They're okay. mostly physical. Okay. 375 pounds. Okay. Most people are going to be blown away when they hear that I weigh over 400 pounds. Yeah. Like nobody ever believes that. Yeah. I was like 426 before the masters. Okay. I'm like 
four oh one right now. Okay. So, it, so, so it's here, working. So here's the key to goals: strategy, structure, accountability. That we call those SSAs. Yep. See, that was uh, what? What do, what do the Johnson files do? Improv. That was improv. Remember yep. what was that one that yes, I said? And. Like P P or it's like PPSs. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, and then seven hours minimum of sleep. Okay. That's my. That'll be the hardest one for you. That's going to be the hardest one. And I tried it last night. I went to bed at ten o'clock. I haven't gone to bed at ten o'clock for years. I'm like one two in the morning. Yeah. But even when I go to bed at two or three in the morning, I can't sleep past like eight thirty or nine, and so it didn't go very well. Like. I woke up so many times. Like I woke up at one. I was able to like I went took a leak and went back to sleep. Woke up at three. Went down and watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians. One episode <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because I was just, I thought I was awake for the day at that point. Yeah. But then at the end of like after like forty five minutes, my eyes started. To, I'm like, oh good, I think I can go back to sleep. And I was able to, but um, so yeah, those are my three. And so I think making money with the podcast it's it's kind of no different than that it's just a matter of me and you you know like i don't know if we've talked too much about the person running our social media no not at all like uh, she's done great and yeah doing awesome tyranny is her name tyranny tyranny good job tyranny we need to i need to meet tyranny but but we need to kind of do the same thing like we you know we talked to some of the people at uvu about some internships like we need to find somebody that knows how to put, because we have the numbers, like we, we could make money, but so, we just have to come up with a plan. Like we just have to come up with a plan and just stick to it. It's, you were talking about investing. Yeah. It's no different than that. Like we just, we have to just compound a few small things together, like do the, our little intro talking about our sponsors and followers and subscribers and then actively like cuz yeah there are people actually actively reaching out to us now wanting to sponsor the show without us even asking. Yeah. Imagine how many more we could get if we actually asked. Yep. So yeah, I I think that that's So I bring it up because yeah, for the next 100 to get excited like in order to grow, you're going to have to be intentional with it, which I think the the product of that growth will be monetization. Right. Right? Going back to the go-giver, like, does it make money? It's Free the, trips. It's the wrong first question. <laughs> it's a great question. It's just the wrong first question. Right. And so if we can, if. But we, we've built the value already. Well, yeah, but I think we can multiply the value and impact more True. people. But in order to do that, it's going to require re, uh, extra resources, right? So that's why I wanted to talk about it because, and anyone who's listening, there's two things. If you want to sponsor the show, we're going to start doing sponsors. Like, right. like Cam said, We've had a couple people reach out already, and so we're talking to them, and there's a whole bunch of cool ways that we can do it, but we're going to start doing some sponsorships. And then the second thing is if you or anyone you know wants to come work with us, right? you know, doing social media, helping schedule guests, you know, just doing other little things like that, let us know because we're going to look to add one or two people. In fact, I got a couple emails from our UVU presentation right. from those people who said they wanted to come. But I just want to talk about it because to your point, I don't know who's listening or who knows right. somebody. So if you're interested in like an actual sponsorship, let us know. And if you know someone who would want to come work, let us know. You know, we can even put them to work outside of the pod. Like we, we need people bad at Bam Bams. Like I posted that the other day. So yeah. I'm going to say that here. Now hiring. Yeah. Please send your children or yep. come yourself. Like we need some people pretty bad over the next couple of weeks, but, but that's the type of thing. Like we can either do internship style or we can pay, we'll pay. Em. We can pay like super small, but we can, we can give you, I can give you full-time hours at Bam Bams yeah. to make it, you know, that's just part of your job title, but, but yeah, we can get creative. So yeah. if there's somebody that you know, or you yourself want to help us, I would say, inst- like, yeah, um, social media and scheduling. Scheduling's a big one. Yeah. Like, just having somebody that's good at correspondence, sending out emails, like, scheduling. Well, there's a lot of cool That's things. the hardest thing for us Yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Wouldn't you for agree? Sure. Uh, yeah. Like, that's the thing that we probably come up, you know, that's always kind of catches up to us. Yep, for sure. So... Yeah, I mean, I think we'll just wrap up the episode with this. But yeah, thank you for sticking with us for a hundred episodes. It's been 
so fun. We're going to get, oh, we're going to get better with cameras too. That's the other thing. So video people, like if there's somebody out there that's good at videography and knows how to edit, like, I think that that's another place we need to invest in. Yeah. That's, our, it's crazy. Like our YouTube channel keeps growing and Brent was telling me yesterday, like we actually have like a lot on YouTube, not really? like subscribers, but we have, what was it? Like 4,500 hours. Oh, wow. Which is like, like a it, lot of content, you mean? So that's like, a, no, people watching. So that, that, oh, means, wow. that means on average, people watch four and a half hours per episode. Wow. No, 45, 45 hours per episode. That's pretty good. So people are actually like paying attention on YouTube. We well, and th- yeah, subscribe I, on YouTube for so sure. We joke about it. But how know? much better would that be if it was more Real like cameras. Rogan, yeah. right? Like where we're, you know, you're getting a good shot at, at everybody. You can see the reactions. You and can see the, thing, the emotion. Like, the first sponsors we get will upgrade equipment. There you go. You know, we'll that's do that. That's a great you know, idea. We'll invest into that so we can. Our new microphones that we keep talking about. The mics and cameras, you know, get some better stuff and. You know, our goal is to level up the podcast. I heard a great quote the other day. What was it? Let's hear it. New level, new devil. Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because. It is scary, but it's true. Like, mo money, mo problems. You know what I mean? Like, every, uh, like, I think I, yeah, it, I heard it more of a spiritual, problems. Yeah. more of a spiritual sense. Sure. Like, new level, new devil. Like, every time you try to better yourself, Satan's coming at you. He wants well, to And it's something that. else. It's not, like, it's not what you just got over. Like, for example, starting the podcast, 100%. it was hard to do it and get used to comfortable and talking to people and uploading them. And, you know, right. like, that's second nature now. Right. Now it's new level. New, oh, I really like that. New level. New yeah. Level. Bam. You never get quotes on the show. <laughs> that's Andrew's deal. New level, new devil. And it applies to everything. But, but yeah, so it, uh, there's 90,000 students like within 10 minutes of us. I know. Like there should be people that even in spurts, like, well, here's the thing, video scheduling, uh, like worst case scenario, you might just get to meet the guests. Yeah. Like come hang out when we record and you can meet a guest. Like people would do that. We have pretty cool guests just to meet the guests. Like we could introduce you to a Kaika. <laughs> <Ikaika. laughs> I love that kid. So, but yeah. So I think that's what I think that's what comes next for us. So if you if yeah, you like the show, too. yeah. If, if you have suggestions, if you want to be a guest, like some people, are like, well, I was just waiting for you to ask. I was like, well, why don't you just ask? See, we've got to do that on other podcasts. That's the other thing that I've kind of been surprised about. Like, you know, we've we've had quite a bit of media lately about us, and we've been a hundred episodes. Like, I'm actually really shocked that we don't get asked to be on more podcasts. Yeah, like you, ourselves as guests. You, yeah, if you want us to be a guest, let us know. We'll do it. It'll I mean, we'll come together. We can we can spread out like it. Like spread eagle. So, yeah, long grinds, <laughs> long grinds, and so. <laughs> but yeah, like we are. You're going to start hearing some more intros and things where we take a little more seriously and get some code. Like we need to be hooking our listeners Better up with, with discounts and. Well, because ultimately, like I want our guests when they come on. I want it to benefit them. I like that we're having a business meeting. On our, our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we are planning things and that is part of the show. But we want you guys to be a part of the show. And that's, you know, we uh, Andrew, you say it all the time. Like every time you think an entrepreneur knows what they're doing, they don't. Like, yeah. We're no different. Like we know what we know, but we're still learning. And so it's kind of fun to talk it through. And anybody that's thinking of starting a podcast, like anybody can do it. Look at us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just start it and you learn as you go. I mean, we've had, yeah, call Brent. Like that's the other, we should talk about that. Brent. So Brent can actually start it like a production that's company. Awesome. Like Brent, he does all of our editing, our sound and, and Uploads he has everything to all the podcast room players. To add, he's been hired by another couple podcasts. Like he has room to grow that. So if you want to start a podcast and you need somebody to do all your, you know, recording, editing, and posting. Yeah. Like, that's your guy. And that that would have been our number one hurdle, right? Sure. Like, Well, I mean, I even talked to Susan and Anna about both of this, and they have both talked about using Brent. But it's funny, I was go- before, we've had six of our guests start a podcast after coming on our Whoa, podcast. I didn't know that. Yeah. We have Mata Shopping. Mata Shopping. Danny, your living proof just started one. Wow. Courtney started hers. Jenna Rammel started one. Perk just launched one. We got to get Jenna back in here. Yeah. Post ADHD diagnosis. Yeah. I would love to do an episode with her. Who was the next one after Jenna? Um, Perk just started one. Oh, yeah. I, I did see that. Yeah. And That's then. Pretty cool. 
I mean, even a couple others like Stephanie starting one, like my business, you know, anyways, it's been kind of interesting. It's been fun. It is, that is really cool. That's a fun little legacy to have. Like, even if we're just a small part of them making that decision to do it. Plus yeah. we have definitely told some people like, why the hell? For sure. I have a podcast. For sure. Susan. Susan. Peterson. Susan. She needs to do a podcast. Yep. Her and Anna could even team up. How Talk about powerhouse, power couple. Yeah. Anyway, we sure appreciate you guys and sticking with us for 100 episodes and growing with us. It's so fun to see the new followers and new people that are showing up. Um, Please reach out. Let us know. We love hearing from you. Right? It makes it way easier. It does. And it, to it, keep it, going. It's good fuel. Let us know who you want in as a guest. Refer people for us. If yeah. you know somebody that would be great and can connect us, and if I'll you give have you free re- barbecue. If you have reached out and we haven't responded, that's just we still... That's tyranny's fault. So well, that's I'm why just we're, joking. <laughs> we still kind of suck at responding to stuff. So don't think that we said no. Just ask again. Just do a little question mark. Like send <laughs> another question mark. And that way we'll see your message again. Just a little nudge. We're just getting really popular. Yeah. You know, we can't help it. No big deal. Oh, gosh. Just kidding. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>